While Tesla primarily manufactures automobiles and Nvidia specializes in designing graphics cards, their business interests have converged, making them somewhat competitors and also partners in the field of artificial intelligence. Both companies have ventured into AI-driven technologies, with Tesla implementing AI for its autonomous driving systems and NVIDIA developing high-performance AI hardware and software solutions. Tesla has already replaced NVIDIA within its in-vehicle system, instead designing an in-house inference chip for crunching the live camera data that's used to have the vehicle drive itself. However, on the data center's side, Tesla has been highly reliant on NVIDIA's technology and literally can't get enough of it. That's why Tesla is investing heavily into their Dojo training computer to blow past NVIDIA and reduce reliance on them while at the same time getting closer to achieving their goals and release what Elon Musk has called mind-blowing new software. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of quarterly financial data going back up to 15 years on over 9,000 stocks, and it's all freely available. NVIDIA just released its second quarter of fiscal 2024 earnings results, which completely shot the lights out. They made over $13.5 billion in revenue, up 88% from just the previous quarter, and doubling from last year. Investors were given fair warning from CEO Jensen Wong about a quarter ago, when the company had raised its revenue guidance from roughly $7 billion to $11 billion, citing incredible demand for the company's GPUs, specifically in the data center. Even so, NVIDIA blew past its own increased revenue guidance by about $2 billion. And it's not stopping there. While the analysts have already adjusted their numbers, raising them significantly in concert with the company's guidance, NVIDIA is now forecasting $16 billion in revenue in the upcoming quarter, while the analysts are still stuck at $12.6 billion. This reminds me of when Apple soared a few years after the iPhone was first released. The company's demand was off the charts, and they were just production constrained. Analysts were expecting a dollar or so earnings per share, and Apple would deliver $3 of earnings per share, as their growth was tremendous and no one really knew how explosive demand for its products really were. And here we have NVIDIA experiencing a similar trend, where the analysts are just using NVIDIA's own guidance as the benchmark for where to fix their earnings targets to, because they're so far off the mark. Just 90 days ago, forecasts for NVIDIA's earnings were in the low $1 per share range for the current quarter. After NVIDIA came out and raised their guidance, analysts followed, adding a full dollar per share to earnings. But just today, NVIDIA reported $2.70 per share, blowing it out of the water about 150% higher than what the analysts would be expecting if NVIDIA didn't say anything. Keep in mind that this is what analysts do for a living. They're typically quite accurate, within a few pennies on their estimates. But it's safe to say that they missed this explosive technology trend and are now playing catch-up. Like Apple for iPhones, and also Tesla for their chips, NVIDIA doesn't actually manufacture their own chips either. They're a fabulous semiconductor company, meaning that they do all of the designs in-house, but they outsource the actual manufacturing. This is a number of advantages and disadvantages, but one of the pros is that you don't need to be the ones to make the large capital investments into fabrication plants, and we can see this reflected in their high margins. Starting just from the same quarter of last year, gross margins company-wide have shot up from 43.5% to 70%, with NVIDIA continuing to experience surging demand and strong pricing power as the race for AI hardware is in its infancy. Now, Tesla is a prime customer of NVIDIA's graphics cards, clustering them together inside the data center for training their self-driving software. Tesla collects millions of miles worth of driving data, which translates into hours and hours of footage from their growing number of vehicles on the road. They then need to process this massive amount of video data to teach their neural nets how to perform better in various driving situations. They make tweaks to their software and neural nets, 
try it out in the field, and then collect more data repeating the process. And so an extremely powerful data center is exactly what Tesla needs to iterate more quickly and thus more rapidly achieve full self-driving. However, NVIDIA graphics cards that power Tesla's data center are in short supply. On the most recent conference call, Elon Musk thanked NVIDIA and CEO Jensen Wong for getting some of this hardware to Tesla, saying that they will take NVIDIA hardware as fast as NVIDIA will deliver it to them. But unfortunately, this isn't fast enough. NVIDIA needs to service the entire market, not just Tesla, and is only giving Tesla a trickle of GPUs relative to what the company actually requires. Elon Musk has stated that the need for AI training is quasi-infinite, and if that's true for Tesla, it's likely true for many other companies as well. And that plays very much into NVIDIA's favor, which is why we're seeing a surge in NVIDIA's earnings as the company boosts production at its suppliers with demand off the charts. While others may be using the compute power for generative AI or many other applications, Tesla's again focusing on self-driving. That's interesting because NVIDIA also has their own self-driving solution called NVIDIA Drive. However, they're basically an arms dealer for the rest of the industry, providing hardware and software to power others' self-driving solutions. So in a sense, NVIDIA doesn't care who wins, they just want to be the supplier for everyone, while Tesla actually needs to solve this complex autonomy problem and get the software working. That said, Tesla is the only player with a war chest of data, which is a key ingredient for training the AI. But they need the GPUs, which NVIDIA is busy selling to others. That's why Tesla is making their own Dojo supercomputer, and the level of growth here is insane. Tesla is measuring their compute power in terms of NVIDIA A100 chips. At the beginning of the year, Tesla had roughly the equivalent of 7,000 of them. But by the end of next year, they want to increase this number by 4,200% to get it to the equivalent of 300,000 A100 GPUs. Tesla has a big advantage over NVIDIA for this particular use case, and it lies partially in their business model. Tesla needs to make the Dojo computer as compact and as powerful as possible. They're essentially building their own data center from the ground up, controlling every piece of the project. NVIDIA has more constraints, it seems, at least right now, since they need to ship a general solution to a multitude of different customers. And so their chips need to work in existing data centers and may not be able to draw the amount of power that Tesla would be using, for instance. Also, NVIDIA doesn't need all of that compute power for itself as much as Tesla does. Otherwise, they wouldn't be selling their chips. They'd be keeping them for themselves for their own applications. On the other hand, Tesla's full self-driving software is expected to be extremely lucrative. And so the software is more important than the chips themselves for Tesla. The next version, version 12, of Tesla's FSD software, which Elon Musk has said won't be a beta version, is once again a complete rewrite of a specific part of the code base. People seem to get upset or nervous when Elon Musk has said in the past that parts of the code base are getting completely rewritten. But this is common in the software industry, and it certainly improved Tesla's FSD capabilities over time. A rewrite is important, because it means that the company has learned a better way of doing something and it's easier to restructure the code from the ground up than to shoehorn a new concept into something that already isn't working correctly. This time, however, Elon Musk says that part of the code base will undergo a 100 times decrease in lines of code, dropping two orders of magnitude from 300,000 lines of C++ code down to 3,000 lines of code. This is the section that governs vehicle control. And so instead of having a massive deterministic list of conditions, Tesla is now confident that their strong AI will be able to do an even better job of controlling the vehicle. This is exciting and also interesting because it's something that George Hotz, former founder and CEO of Kama AI, has always touted that Kama AI was doing better than Tesla, simply allowing the neural nets to handle everything and removing the human-controlled aspect, which could ultimately be more error-prone or may not cover as many scenarios. And now Tesla is switching to neural nets as well. It's like having a chess engine tell you the best move, 
but then having a layer of humans intervene and make a different decision. Chess engines have become so powerful that the human may be unable to comprehend the move, but the chess engine is thinking far ahead. Removing any human decisions would actually improve the game. And so essentially, this is similar to replacing 300,000 lines of human decision making for the car and having the AI handle it using data for millions of miles of driving that humans can't even comprehend. One question might be, why didn't Tesla start with this? Or was it worth it to implement it manually, so to speak, and then switch to neural nets later? This is debatable, however, now that Tesla has done it this way, they have the advantage of being able to compare the quality of their human implemented version against the AI version, and so they have this benchmark that they can use. And perhaps also now is the time where the hardware is becoming available to scale, whereas previously a primitive AI would have been worse than a manual one. Now that primitive AI can get extremely good if you follow Tesla's curve with regards to ramping up compute power and therefore training. Elon Musk has confirmed that Tesla is indeed compute constrained, requiring more data and more compute for training, tying back into the need for more and faster hardware. However, this new version 12 of FSD, relying on much less code and machine-driven decision-making, is mind-blowing according to Elon Musk, and Tesla is still in its very early phases of ramping up Dojo. If the software can operate a vehicle in the real world, much like how a chess engine dominates human players, and it's now positioned to achieve this thanks to the recent rewrite, then given the trend, Tesla's FSD software is on track to become unstoppable. So do you think Nvidia's sudden explosive increase in GPU demand might foreshadow a major development going on at Tesla? Don't forget to watch my last video on Tesla's new Model S and Model X vehicles. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.